Let's give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, is everything all right over there with you? Over here, there's plenty of good things. The campaigns we held recently were very, very blessed. We witnessed God's hands doing amazing things. It was very, very beautiful indeed. It was very blessed. I've been preaching an important word from God's kingdom, and I'm thrilled with this word because we are not in a kingdom of food and drink. We're in a kingdom of power of the Holy Spirit. It's where the Lord operates. He has to do it, and he wants to do it. Jesus was quite clear when he said, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. He went through all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and healing all kinds of diseases and infirmities. We can't deviate under no circumstance at all from the focus that he gives us so that we do not stumble. Israel changed. When Israel entered the land of the promise in the time of the judges, they decided, amazingly enough, to seek the gods of Ammonites, the Moabites, the Sidonians, the Egyptians, brethren, they found poverty and suffering. It's in the book of Judges. When he realized there was no way out, then he cried out to God. Let's see the answer the Lord God gave to him. Judges 10.14 Friends, it is written in Judges 10.14, Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. This is happening today. People come to the Lord's house. They start to prosper. But guess what they choose? The so-called gods of prosperity. Maman. Others chose Minerva, goddess of culture and wisdom. Others chose Eros of prostitution, of erotic things. Unfortunately, they're in God's house but serving other gods. Then all of the other gods or deals they come along. And they'll call on God. God says, okay, see if they can deliver you. See if the money can deliver anyone when, when, thing, when it gets hard. Even the, even the best doctor, he will say, there's nothing else that I can do, but God can deliver you. Let's do the opposite. Let's serve God who has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and conveyed us to his kingdom, because in his kingdom, we do have power to solve all of our problems. Let me give you a testimony. 30 years ago, I was going, I was going down a steep, a steep terrain and I felt a stabbing pain in this muscle. When I was a boy, I was a shoemaker and I used an iron bar. Shoemaker used it and put it here. I hit the damp sole until it got dry and stiff so that it would last, so that it would last longer. It was done in the past. I don't know if they still do it. Well, I felt the pain right here. It was very, very painful. I have an aunt who, who is still alive. She, she was a professional masseuse. She's very old now. When I told her, she said, that's easy. Go see the doctor. He'll operate on you. It'll be just fine. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's no way I'll do it. I, I exercise a lot. Sometimes we feel some pain and I pray. The other day I, I was jogging along. Last week, actually. I was jogging as usual, but praising the Lord. But then... I was thinking about God's kingdom. I said, God, I'm in your kingdom and what now? I rebuke it. I was jogging, I was jogging, ordered it to leave my thigh and the pain never returned. I cast it out. Brethren, never more. It was gone on the spot. We are in the kingdom of success. I told this story a few days ago. Some people had never heard about it and glory to God for that. We have that word that Jesus said, the remedy against evil is to watch, is to watch and pray. It can be found in the, in in the book of Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So they did not watch and entered into temptation. You must wake up on the word. The moment you wake up, God operates on you. Amen? Let's applaud Jesus. <laughs> Judges 10, starting from verse number 6. Judges 10, 6 goes like this. We'll go through verse 14, where there's a message for us. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baalis and the Astorets, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. What a tragic resolution. 
There are people who know that the gospel is the truth. They've already been here and they were baptized. But today they are serving mammon, thinking that their life is eternal. They think the only old people don't know better, but not them. They'll always be young, yes. They'll enjoy things all of their life. They're doing things that are not good. Some are serving the demons of deception. Gods here are demons, but people thought they were gods. There's only one and true God. They serve them and thought that everything would be all right. But friends, just as the seasons of the year are always, always changing, raining season, drought season, sometimes in the raining season it doesn't rain, but let's move on. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Brethren, don't let the anger of God be hot against you, no. The price to pay will be very high. And what happened next? And he sold them. He sold the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. He could have sold them into the hands of the others as well. It would be too much. Two enemies were enough. Some people have provoked God so much that they are in the hands of the troubler. Things haven't worked out at all for them. All doors have been closed. All they do goes, goes wrong and their sin is hidden in their heart. The sin keeps hidden. They wonder. They blame people and they blame circumstances when they should talk to God themselves. They knew it. And what happened then? From that year, they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel. For 18 years, all the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites in Gilead. The Jordan divided them. On one side, there were two and a half tribes. For 18 years, they were oppressed by those others, those, those tribal gods. And on the other side, moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over to Jordan to fight against Judah, also against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim so that Israel was severely, severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. Um, so the Lord said to the children of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon? and from the Philistines, also the Sidonians and the Amalekites and Mananites oppressed you and you cried and you cried out to me and I delivered you from their hand. When they cried out the other time, didn't God deliver them from their hand? Why did they serve their gods? Some of them might have said, now our situation has been solved. No, go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. Oh, Dr. Suarez, so there was no way out. There is, brethren. Pray, watch, and pray is the solution. Why should we do it? So that we don't enter into temptation. So that we don't keep under temptation. The only way out of any crisis that has befallen upon your life is to pour out your heart to God. Pray with intent. Confess all the things that you have done now. Write them down and make sure to undo all of them. Each action that you have done will not be undone unless you pray in all earnest before the Lord. There's no use in pretending to forget to say you don't remember. You don't remember this. You don't remember that. You keep doing it and repeating it over and over again. Things are getting much worse. Watch. Write them down. Analyze all that you have done. Write them down. When I was younger, I was 20 years old or so, I had a clothing store that I went bankrupt. There was no way out. So what did I do? I wrote a list of all my debtors. I put it inside the Holy Bible and prayed with all my heart. Whenever I went, the Bible was with me and with that list inside, I said, Lord God, if you help me out, I'll never borrow money from anyone again. I learned what's in Romans 13, 8. Oh, no one anything, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. I took that stand. Whenever I paid someone, I crossed them out from paying after paying them. When I paid the very last one, I was ready to get married. And I did get married. In two months, I could set up the date because I didn't owe anyone anything. Whatever I earned was for my home. Take a stand before God, watch, analyze, 
See why you have fallen. Remember from where you have fallen, says the Holy Bible. Write it down, because your sin is standing. In our law, certain crimes that can't be prosecuted after some time, but not in the spiritual word, no. It may have happened 60 years ago. It still stands before the Lord. Why did it happen? Because you gave ear to the devil. So you must confess your sins. So God said, go after your gods now. Didn't I deliver you a long time ago from this and this and from that one? Of course I can deliver you. But since you chose other gods, go seek those gods now. But they didn't accept that. The word says, watch, 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 and pray. The word is, the word is eternal. What, but what did they do? And the children of Israel said to the Lord, we have sinned. Do to us whatever seems to be best for you. Only deliver us this day, we pray then. What did God do for them? God gave them the capacity uh, to repent. Repentance is a process. Some things are done in a minute, or they're done in a year or more. While you keep on hiding your sins, you have the Lord's wrath upon you. So confess immediately, spill it all out, confess just about everything, get rid of it, then you will have have the love of God. Don't trifle with the Lord God. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and serve the Lord. They started to serve God, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. There's no other word to describe it, and there's no other word to describe those who are under under punishment due to an error. They are in misery. They stumble every day. They are hurt every day. And if they don't rise up the way they're supposed to, they will keep on suffering. It goes on to say, Then the people of Ammon gathered together and they encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. There would be a battle. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said to one another, Who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Well, there was no one. They found only one who was the son of of transgression called Jephthah, whom was made fun of by them. And that was the man that God used. It means that you do need to find a leader, which is the word of God, a messenger from God, his word, because his words are spirit and life. Each revelation you receive from the Bible is not just information that God is giving. It contains the presence of God as if it were an angel of God that will be the head of that heavenly force in order to give you freedom. And you have to pay attention because there'll be more things within the Bible that you'll understand over the process of deliverance. Is there deliverance for the fallen? Yes, but you have to follow the biblical ritual. Those things in the Old Testament are examples of the things that happen today. They are symbols, just like they had to find someone who had, been, who had been conceived out of the wedlock. That man was ridiculed, but God rose that man, and he is rising you up and has a promise for you, a promise that he has prepared so as he can be your deliverer. And the moment you find it, God, I found it. Now I know that you will give me freedom. Don't ever let go of that promise. It'll open up your understanding so that you can get others to do other things that I have no idea what things they will be. But the moment will come when you will remember. When I was jogging, I remembered after the pain in my thigh. I had to stop every time. No, I am in the kingdom of God. I was speaking with God. You might think I was crazy. I was jogging and glorifying the Lord, confessing all the promises about the kingdom of God. I know I'm a man of God. I know you put me in your kingdom. I know I have power over evil. In the name of Jesus now, I ordered it to leave and kept on jogging. And it went away in the name of Jesus. Uh, Yes, dear brethren, oftentimes as I was listening to an evangelical song in the car while driving, I was tapping along but stopped and followed the rhythm on the other thigh because it would hurt, but not anymore in the name of Jesus. They found Jephthah, and you will find your deliverer too, and God is willing, and God is willing. He may have a sullen look. 
He may cause you to cry out to God because you really need it. You have forsaken the Lord, but God will give you a chance. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for your word, your living word, your powerful word, your uplifting word, my God. Why can't you do right now, Father? These men who are bankrupt, this person who turned his back on you and even said certain things, God, so that the devil wanted him to say so that he could have an influence on him. Now, God, the same authority that I had on the day when I was jogging, I have it with me right now. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I paralyze all of the deeds of the enemy in the life of these people. And I say, devil, it's time for you to beat a retreat, to wither away. I'm not kindly asking you. I'm giving an order. And I say these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I paralyze all your actions and I command now let go of these people go away now don't oppress them I'm not asking I'm giving an order and this name I order right now leave go away your hour is completely broken all of your actions are completely undone and I set these people free now brethren I'm setting you free in the name of the Lord Jesus this oppression bottled up within your chest, in your breathing system. I command it to leave now and any other oppression that's in any part of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I rebuke it, I reproach it, I cast it out and I command it to leave right now, go away. I'm giving an order now in the name of Jesus, brethren, God's operating on you, believe it. This is the prayer for you to get rid of this pain, this trouble, this, this pressure in your chest now. You may start taking a deep breath now and praise the Lord God because your evil is gone. Your evil has left. And in the name of Jesus, all evil is undone for the glory of God. And you say, Amen. Glory to God. Look at me now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Take a deep breath now for the glory of God. Oh, Dr. Swatis, my problem has just disappeared. Who was having breathing problems and has been delivered? Dr. Swatis, I'm delivered. After you prayed, it's gone. Let me hear you now in the name of Christ. When I pray out of inspiration, I know at least one person is delivered. What was your problem, sister? I was feeling an anguish in my heart. Is it gone? In the name of Jesus. Is it's over now? It's over now. And, and you, what happened, friend? I, I was feeling pressure in my chest. I've had it for three weeks, actually. It was difficult for me to breathe. Is it gone now? It's gone. Oh, glory to God. What happened to you, sister? I was in the hospital because I was sick. I couldn't come to church for a month because of that. Today, I went to the hospital, and before I left, while I was there, I talked to God. I said I would come to church for Him to heal me. I'm here, thank God, for the honor and glory of Jesus. I'm healed. Oh, glory to God. Over there, what happened? It's a hernia, and I had it above my belly button, and it's disappeared. Mm -hmm. I can even wear my compression belt here now. <laughs> now it's gone. It's gone now? It's gone. This is so awesome. He's even opened this belt to show it. <laughs> Amen. It was swollen. It was swollen. It's still a little lumpy. The size decreased. It's a little lumpy. But compared to how it was, the compression belt fits me now because it's gone, but I'll keep wearing it. Of course. And hold yes. fast to your faith. Keep holding it. That's because right. Because oftentimes the work's not finished if we don't keep our faith. That's right. It was bigger. Now it's smaller. Uh, it's decreased. All right. Glory to God. Up Amen. there, what happened? Dr. Suarez, I had cataract in both my eyes and I was about to have a, to, to have a surgery. Uh -huh. Then after the prayer, I became new. Brand new, actually, in the name of Jesus. All right. Glory to Amen. God. What happened to you, Missy? Pastor, my belly was hurting so much. And after you prayed, the pain is gone. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Let's watch the real life drama now, shall we? Jose took a tumble in the 70s, and it injured his right hand. 
He fell down. He fell down and he used his hand to support his body. I could close it, but when it hurt, it did this. He likes to exercise, but he couldn't do properly because his hand would hurt. In the past, I would cling to the bar like this and move my body upwards. But then after, after the fall, it would, it would hurt so much that I didn't even try. How would I, I lift my body of a, around 69 kilos? I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. He went to a doctor who prescribed painkillers. He was always complaining because he couldn't hold anything. He would be upset. I knew that I couldn't do it. But everybody closes their hand. Why couldn't I close mine? So I made the decision to go seek my healing with Dr. Suarez and his church, and I spent the whole week thinking about it. It's faith that produces the miracle. If you don't have it, so why do you go to church? You'll have no results. And once again, it wasn't any different. On July 1st, 2015, Jose goes to the church in Curitiba to attend another meeting of faith held by Dr. R. R. Suarez. With trust in the Lord's moving, he sought his healing in God. As uh, soon as I got there, he prayed for ailing hands. I said, cool, the first thing, healing hands, that's me. And I attained exactly what I was saying. I will pray now for those who have ailing hands. Dr. Schwartz, I can't open and close my hands. I took a tumble. I had an accident. If you have a problem in your hands, come up front now in the name of Jesus. He dashed out to the front row. He didn't even call me to go with him. He just hurried by himself. When he spoke about healing, I took position. And when he did that, I noticed that I'd been healed. And then I raised my hands with joy. It came over to me because God, when he gives a, a blessing to somebody, he gives us joy and it comes from inside. Jose Ferreira, what happened to your hand? For more than 40 years, around 40 years or so, I had an accident and I even broke this finger here. I couldn't close my hand because it would hurt, but I close it and it doesn't hurt. This finger is almost closing. It's still kind of stiff. I broke this finger. You did, but Jesus also heals broken fingers. I, I couldn't do this, but now I can. For, for 40 years? 40 years ago, I had an accident. And and now yeah, God's well, blessed you. It didn't hurt, but now, look, I can close and now, it. I, I don't have any pain. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. He doesn't complain about his hand, and he even showcases it. <laughs> I was always opening and closing, opening and closing it. Whenever I go to open and close it, I said, Lord, I have no doubt. I'm just happy to be able to close my hand and without feeling pain. Now, I love to move my fingers. I used to do it before, but now I can even lift heavy objects. I lift my tool case without any problem. I could lift it. I remember my hand was once ailing, but now I don't even remember this. Nothing. I don't remember anything. My grandchildren come here and my great-grandchildren also, and they are small children, and he does a handstand with them. <laughs> like a child does, you know? He's healed, thanks be to God, for the honor and glory of God. I'm so happy about it. Let's applaud Jesus, brethren. In testimonies like these, they're the word of God being applied. They serve as a lesson for us, because if God did it for Jose, he can do it for anyone else. We never know what will happen. I never know what problem people have, but God touched my heart, I prayed, and people started to give testimonies. Without a doubt, God wants to do more. At the end of the sermon, we will pray, and God will bless us more. Let's go to the question segment now. Doctor, where is it written in the Bible that there is power in our words? This is not exactly written in the Bible that there's power in our words. One of the verses that says something similar states, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Then someone wrote a book uh, inspired by this verse and said, there's power in your words. I believe it was Don Gossett who wrote it. And everybody says it's written in the Bible. No. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And Jesus said, believe in what you say so your words when uttered with faith have power. Second question. Dr. Suarez, please tell me how parents should proceed so as not to provoke their children to wrath. I must treat everyone with respect. One day, two, two, of, two of my sons were doing something that I didn't like. They were arguing. 
I drew near, and instead of slapping my sons, I said, hey, 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 let's think about it for a second. We must be wise. The strength of an adult is far greater than that of a child, right? So then I said, children, you know that the unbelievers, uh, that they speak, spank their children violently. And you know you did something wrong, don't you? <laughs> yes, but you're my brothers in Christ. Haven't you accepted Jesus? So we are brothers in Christ. It's not because I'm your father that I'm going to slap you. Do you promise before God that you won't do this ever again? Then both of them said, we do. So let's pray together, group hug now. So we hugged each other, we prayed and cried. It was better than being beaten up. It did change them. Use the word of God, it's always better. Let's go to the Open Your Heart segment now. Dr. Suarez, my son and my daughter-in-law are going through hardships that are affecting me so much. He is unemployed and has a big problem in his back and she has multiple myomas and a gallbladder stone. They are both evangelical. Dr. Suarez, what might cause servants of God to be struck by evil like this? I won't even answer it. Get a copy of today's service and you will see what happened to Israel. People are lost, brethren. They don't go to church. When they go, they do it just for the sake of it. They don't seek out God. They don't open up their heart. They don't have an encounter with God. And the devil is helping them. How are you prospering? You see how success, how successfully, how successfully you're doing in your businesses. And people don't wake up until problems come. Come back to Jesus. And he will set you free. Come back to Jesus, really. Let's stand up because we will pray now. And blessed be the Lord God. Bow your head and close your eyes now. You are in the presence of the Lord Most High. God, in the name of Jesus, we are entering into your presence. We are here to take possession of the blessing. We will take possession of what belongs to us. And God, I pray for all of those who suffer. Lord, I bind all the evil actions in these, in these people. I cast them out now and I say evil, leave, go away. Don't oppress them anymore in the name of Jesus.